Today I'm going to teach you guys how to ride a sport bike. Before you do anything, make sure you cover up your dash. You could use duct tape or a sticker or whatever it is that you want. When you're learning to ride a sport bike, the last thing you want to be doing is constantly looking down at your dash. Learning to ride motorcycles is all about learning how the motorcycle feels. It's important that you learn this concept now so you're not relying on the dashboard to tell you what's going on. You should always know what gear you're in without having to look down. Now unless you're riding an electric motorcycle, all sport bikes are manual transmission. And if you don't know how to drive a manual transmission, just do the world a favor and call Call back in your mom's video. All right, the components. This is your front brake. These are your front brake calipers. There's two of them. This is your rear brake. Your rear brake is connected to the rear wheel. You push the lever down with your right foot to activate the rear brake. On the left side, you got your clutch lever and your shifter. I have mine set up in a reverse pattern. First gear is shifting up, neutral is a half a click down, and then second through sixth gear is down all the way. So if the bike is in gear, the rear wheel won't move. If it's in neutral, the rear wheel is free. Your clutch is usually on the right side and it's activated by this clutch lever. Remember when I said if the bike is in gear, the rear wheel won't move? If you activate the clutch lever, it loosens up the clutch in order for the rear wheel to be able to move. This is what a dry clutch looks like. Inside your sport bike, you may have a wet clutch, but they basically do the same thing. You see how tight this is? When the clutch lever gets pulled in, it loosens the clutch, which frees up everything in here. As you let go, everything tightens back up. Now you can't move it, and whatever gear you're in will be activated, and you can use the throttle to move the bike forward. The clutch is gonna be one of the most important things when you're learning how to ride a motorcycle because it's all about the friction zone. The friction zone is when that clutch closes up and the organic pads inside the clutch disc start to come together like glue. Pulling in the clutch separates everything and frees everything up and letting the clutch go tightens everything up. When you're initiating first gear movement, it's all about clutch control and where in that friction zone you are that you can let go of the clutch and start to throttle. It's a very delicate balance, but once you figure out friction zone, everything else should fall into place if you're not a complete idiot. First thing you're gonna wanna do is get on the bike and try to feel it out. Feel what the clutch feels like. Try doing two finger clutches, one finger clutch, four fingers. Get comfortable sitting on the bike. It helps if you have a rear stand. Get a feel for the throttle, where the rear brake is. Try not to look down, that's why I had you cover the dash. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is get the bike off the stand and on its side stand. Get on the bike and try to feel it side to side. If you're short like me, it's gonna be very difficult for you. Try to feel that weight, get that kickstand up. You might drop it at this point, but that's okay. Dropping motorcycles is a part of riding. You gotta feel for it if you can push it forward and backward. Do the one foot thing and do this for a little while. If you're tall enough to walk the bike forward and backward, try that. I'm not tall enough, obviously. Okay, let's get on the bike, start it, and do some friction zone exercises. But before we do that, make sure you find a motorcycle safety course now. They run between $300 to $500. It's like a three-day course. They teach you how to ride on like Honda Rebels. And most of the time, if you pass the class there, you'll automatically get your motorcycle license. Okay, so before you start the bike, there's two things you need to consider. A lot of these new sport bikes have things like traction control, ABS. They have different power modes. I personally like just turning everything off and putting it at the max power it has. The reason I do that is so I don't have to learn different modes. That's all it is. I'm just lazy. I don't want to learn how the throttle feels in sport mode. I don't want to learn how the throttle feels in track mode. I just put it in race mode and delete everything else. I'm not against electronic aids. I think they're amazing. I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to utilize all that stuff. Okay, I'm not going to go over how to start the bike because every motorcycle is going to be different. For me, I just turn it on, keep it in neutral and press a button. Now you're just going to find the friction zone on the clutch by letting the clutch go slowly. You'll feel the bike start to move forward and you can just walk with the bike just like this. Pull the clutch in to stop the momentum. You can hold the brake or you can stop yourself with the legs. Right now it's all about finding the friction zone with the clutch and stopping with the brakes or with your feet. First gear and notice how I'm not looking down. I'm looking forward the whole time. This is what you want. And you just kind of want to go in a straight line, pull the clutch in to slow down, and then you can hit the brake to stop. Very simple. And if you're going to drop the bike, this is the time you're going to drop the bike. <laughs> Back into neutral. Now I'm going to show you with the GoPro. Okay, POV time. Start the bike. Get a feel for that throttle. Okay. You won't really need throttle in this first stage. It's all clutch and brake and then finding neutral. Okay, put it in the first. Got both my feet down. 
release the clutch slowly and the bike starts to go walk it walk it pull the clutch in stop at the front brake and do this for a while notice how I'm not letting go of the clutch all the way because you don't need to just like that now we're gonna go over the speed bump and I'm just gonna coast right up it there you go come to a stop pull the clutch in brake and then you're gonna do that for a little bit just like that and for now you're just gonna turn with the handlebars I'll show you guys how to turn in a few but essentially you just want to do this for a little while find that friction zone again and if you feel comfortable enough put your feet up just like this and you're just controlling the motorcycle with the clutch see that just like that I'm pulling it in I'm feeling the friction zone to get going letting it go pulling it in letting it go slowly pulling it in and you can feel what the bike is doing you can feel what that clutch is doing using the friction zone is the very first step to even get the bike going notice I haven't touched the, the throttle once you can actually if you're confident enough you can let go of this and just try to try to use your your clutch to get you to move it's so simple just like that okay now we're gonna turn around here I'm gonna come to a really slow movement get my feet back down and then use the clutch and handlebars to turn me in the direction that I want okay and I'm using my feet I got my feet down right now again if you're gonna drop it it's probably gonna be in this phase okay now I got my feet up and I'm gonna use the clutch to get me back to where I need to go your wrists and your hands are gonna get tired from this it's all clutch just like that and if you're really confident maybe like 30 minutes of this is all you need before you can start using the throttle to get you going but be very easy on the throttle and you're gonna want to let go of the clutch fully okay and sometimes depending on the bike that you have you may need throttle to get going with the clutch if it's a sport bike most of the time all you need is a clutch but don't quote me on that because some bikes actually need throttle and clutch but here we go clutch only bam now I'm gonna let go of the clutch as I ease into the throttle and now we're going we're going in first gear just like that now it's all throttle control and if I want to slow down let go of the throttle pull the clutch in this is all you're gonna do in first gear first gear is how you're gonna learn how to ride motorcycles it's so simple but it takes a little bit of confidence and knowing how certain things work like I said the clutch is probably one of the most important parts of the motorcycle that you're gonna need to understand how it works to even be able to start riding the motorcycle so now that we know how the clutch works throttle is something that's very obvious but again you have to be very easy on this throttle don't twist it too hard obviously and you're just gonna do this for a while actually I think in motorcycle safety school they teach you first gear only on the first day so if you already bought a sport bike you can go around your neighborhood and put around in first gear 
All right, the next concept I want to talk about is counter steer and counter weight because they're two different things. Counter steer is the concept of pushing on the inside clip-on to help bring the bike lower on the side that you're pushing in order to help you steer the motorcycle towards the inside direction. That means if I'm counter steering on the right clip-on, I'm trying to go to the right. And if I'm counter steering on the left clip-on, I'm trying to go to the left. Counter steering is more used at the track or in some instances in the canyons or long sweeping highway curves. When you're counter steering, most of the time your butt is going to be off the seat and your body is hanging off the bike. Counter weight is basically your body counteracting the weight of the bike. So if the motorcycle is leaning this way, I'm going to counteract the weight with my body a lot more vertical or more towards the opposite direction. So the bike is leaning this way, I'm going to counteract the weight by putting my weight this way. And a lot of this technique is gonna be in the handlebars. You're kind of pushing it this direction or this direction while shifting your weight to the opposite side. Went ahead and marked a couple spots on the road to try to avoid using counter weight. One here and one right there. Here we go. Find the spots. Counter, counter, bam. So the concept of counter weight is pretty simple. So I'm making a left, I'm shifting my butt, and bringing the bike back. See that? I'm gonna go try to make a right right here. And instead of leaning over, I'm actually just leaning the bike and keeping my weight up. Okay? I'm gonna counter left now. A Little bit of front brake, counter. I'm not leaning to the left. I'm just leaning the bike over to the left. Again, you can do all these techniques within your neighborhood. Okay? Come to a stop. This is all in first gear. Counter. Releasing the clutch a little bit to get going. Boom. Okay? I'm going to counter again right here, got the clutch in, I'm not leaned over, there you go, and that is counterweight, it's very very simple, it's really just shifting your, your, your bike down using the handlebars and keeping your weight kind of upward, you're not leaning over, okay, clutch in, brake, counter right, make that right turn okay counter the bike you may notice that I'm turning the bars a little bit and I'm hitting the brake it's a combination of everything you've learned in first gear clutch in to slow down brake to slow down you can turn the bars a little bit if you need to especially if it's a really really slow corner just because the sport bike has clip-ons and not traditional handlebars doesn't mean we can't turn this bike you can always turn the handlebars a little bit to help you steer when you're doing slow maneuver turns so again what you're gonna want to do is put those two principles together first gear friction zone and counterweight turning do that for a little bit do it for like 45 minutes to an hour Get used to coming to a stop using your friction zone to get you started. Counterweight balance to do slow maneuver turns. You can even practice U-turns if you want. And once you get that first gear really in your head down path, then we can move on to shifting. All right, welcome to shifting. This is the second part. By now, you should have already been practicing the first gear, friction zone, counterweight theories, concepts within the last day or so. You can get anywhere around your neighborhood in first gear. There's no reason for you to shift from first to second in the first couple days unless you're a complete badass. Here's what you're gonna wanna do to shift from first to second. Find yourself a nice straight road somewhere in your neighborhood still that you can go back and forth on and shift from first to second. Make sure it's pretty wide so that way you can turn around and go back and forth and shift. But essentially, once you find that road, you're gonna give it some gas, pull in the clutch, shift in a second, and let go of the clutch and gas it a little bit at the same time, just like that, okay? And now what I want you to do is shift back down to first, let the throttle go, clutch in, first gear, and then slowly release the clutch while giving it some gas at the same time. And this is all you're going to do for a little while. First gear to second. Second gear to first. 
That way you can feel both upshift and downshift. If your bike has a quick shifter, don't use that yet. First gear to second. Nice and easy, just like that. Second gear to first. Let the clutch go slowly. Give it some gas. Perfect. Now, when you're downshifting, you're gonna feel the bike slow down. That is normal. Typically what you wanna do when you're coming to a stop is downshift gradually into first gear or neutral. Sometimes what I like to do is if I'm coming to a stop sign, I'll put the bike in neutral and come to a complete stop. And then I'll put the bike in first gear, look left, look right, and then I'll go. Just like that. Okay, I'm coming to the end of the road. I'm gonna turn around and practice those maneuvers again. Here we go, counterweight. Perfect. Get going. Here's a stop sign. Now, here's the other thing you could do when you come to a stop sign. Just hold that clutch in, come to a complete stop, keeping the bike in first gear. Look left, look right, look left again. Get going. Didn't have to even put it in neutral. Practice your shifting concept again. Clutch in. Woo, put that in, put that in the third. Okay, clutch in, second gear, throttle. That simple, okay? Now if you wanna shift up in the third, just shift up in the third the same way. Clutch in, shift third, throttle. It's that easy, guys. The first concept of the clutch is the most difficult thing. The clutch and first gear. Now I'm gonna shift from third to second. There you go. Try to be as smooth with it as possible. That's what the concept of first gear and the clutch is for the first day. Trying to be as smooth with the clutch and throttle so that way when you get out here on the regular streets, you're shifting a lot smoother into the higher gears. Coming to a stop now. Shift into first. Let the clutch go slowly. This will help me slow down too. Bam. Okay, we're gonna go from first to second to third. So first gear, we're rolling. Clutch in second, throttle. Clutch in third. At this point, you could do fourth, fifth, and even sixth. So let me show you guys. Fourth, fifth, sixth. Really boggy though if you go this high in gears. So I'm gonna go back down to third just like that it's so simple but that's it this is how you ride a motorcycle once you get that first gear and clutch you can ride this bike anywhere anytime now speaking of anywhere anytime one of the scariest things to learn is your first time on the highway so let's go <laughs> one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself is to relax the nerves will get you if you don't relax it's very likely that you may drop your motorcycle because you're so tensed up that's why you want to spend a couple days in first gear that'll help you get to know the controls help you get to feel the weight of the bike because the weight of the bike is probably going to be the hardest thing to try to get used to once you get going the bike does feel nimble but when it's static it feels really heavy because if you think about a sport bike they're about 400 pounds they're very heavy motorcycles you can start practicing going up hills, going down hills, using the rear brake a little bit. I mostly use the front brake when I'm on the streets. That's just me. You're gonna learn a lot more in motorcycle safety school. So again, make sure you sign up for that. Take the course, get your license. They don't use sport bikes, but it is okay to get on YouTube and learn how to ride a sport bike before you even take your safety course. I did. I was riding a whole year until I got pulled over and the cop was like, look, go get your license and this ticket will go away. I'm like, great. And that's the only reason I took the motorcycle safety course. 
But at that time, I had already had one year of riding experience. And just like you, I learned how to ride motorcycles from YouTube videos. So there is no shame in learning how to ride motorcycles in YouTube videos, because I did it. And I know a lot of people have too. If you learn how to ride motorcycles on YouTube, comment down below and let me know. Also, if you have any other tips that might help these guys that are watching, please comment them down below. Let's help them out, guys. Riding motorcycles is one of the funnest things you'll ever do in your life. And when people find out I ride motorcycles, they always tell me, damn, I've always wanted to learn. I've always wanted to get one. And my advice to them is, go get one and start learning. And they're always like, don't I need to take the safety course? I'm like, yes, you can go that route. It's probably a little bit smarter, but if you're a do I why, do I why? <laughs> if you're a DIY type of person, you might just want to learn it on your own in your neighborhood. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is completely fine. You're not going to hurt anybody by riding around your neighborhood on a motorcycle in first gear. Unless you're a complete idiot. Okay, we're about to take this thing on the highway. The important thing about taking the bike on the highway for your first time is to find a stretch that has an entrance and an exit that's really close together. Because the first time is going to be a little bit scary and I get that. But all we're going to do is enter get on the highway get up to speed and then exit turn around and come back and you're gonna do that for a couple times so let's go all right here we go make sure you look get up to speed shift in a second and it's okay to shift early you don't have to redline the bike Okay, this is where you're going to get nervous, but you need to relax. Take a look over to your left to make sure. Signal. And now you're on the freeway. And I'm only in third gear. You can shift it up to fourth if you like. But you don't really need fifth or sixth gear for the highway. Especially if you're riding a leader bike. And there you go. You're on the highway. It's chill. It's not that bad. <laughs> so the highway riding is probably the easiest thing you could do because everybody's going the same direction. It's not any different from learning how to drive a car. Driving on the highway is one of the safest things you can do. There's no intersections. People are going about the same speed. Typically people keep a good following distance, which is nice, which you should do too. You shouldn't be on somebody's ass, somebody's bumper like this freaking a-hole right here. Look at that. Don't do that. Don't do what that guy does. What you want to do is keep a good distance, okay? But honestly, once you get over highway riding, there's not much else I can do for you because you're riding a motorcycle. So welcome, welcome to the two-wheel family.